just to begin, I'm going to read to you from the two parts of the book. The book is made up of two parallel stories, and they are forever crossing the same physical ground, the same geography. They both begin in New York, and they begin to journey towards Israel, toward Tel Aviv, and ultimately into the desert, uh, the Judean desert. Um, but they're also constantly crossing the same metaf metaphysical ground, and they are in constant conversation with each other without ever exactly really touching, or maybe they do. We'll leave that up to you when you read the book. So this first part um, is just the very opening of the book, um, and I don't need to tell you anything about it. At the time of his disappearance, Epstein had been living in Tel Aviv for three months. No one had seen his apartment. His daughter Lucy had come to visit with her children, but Epstein installed them in the Hilton, where he met them for lavish breakfasts, at which he only sipped tea. When Lucy asked to come over, he'd begged off, explaining that the place was small and modest, not fit for receiving guests. Still reeling from her parents' late divorce, she'd looked at him through narrow eyes. Nothing about Epstein had previously been small or modest, but despite her sus suspicion, she'd had to accept it, along with all the other changes that had come over her father. In the end, it was the police detectives who showed Lucy, Jonah, and Maya into their father's apartment, which turned out to be in a crumbling building near the ancient port of Jaffa. The paint was peeling, and the shower let down directly above the toilet. A cockroach strutted majestically across the stone floor. Only after the police detective stomped on it with his shoe did it occur to Maya, Epstein's youngest and most intelligent child, that it may have been the last one to see her father, if Epstein had ever really been there at all. The only things that suggested he had inhabited the place were some books warped by the humid air that came through an open window and a bottle of the Coumadin pills he'd taken since the discovery of an atrial fibrillation five years earlier. It could not have been called squalid, and yet the place had more in common with the slums of Calcutta than it did with the rooms in which his children had stayed with their father on the Amalfi Coast in Cap Antibes. Though like those other rooms, this one also had a view of the sea. In those final months, Epstein had been, become difficult to reach. No longer did his answers come hurtling back regardless of the time of day or night. If before he'd always had the last word, it was because he'd never not replied. But slowly, his messages had become more and more scarce. Time ex expanded between them because it had expanded in him. The 24 hours he'd once filled with everything under the sun was replaced by a scale of thousands of years. <laughs> 